Welcome to the Arclight Battery, your power source for all things Warcraft Rumble related. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at all of the units and their talents, and I will be telling you the talent that I personally think is best. Uh, that way I can help free-to-play players pick one talent, uh, if that's all they can afford, and make sure they're making the best choice possible. So, before we get into today's video, I just want to say thank you so much again for watching. I know I say it every video, but I'm going to keep saying it every video because I really do appreciate it. Thank you guys for being here. The support has been fantastic. Um, and just thank you guys so much for watching. And with that, let's get into the video. Once again, if you're wondering why you should take my opinion into account, well, I've cleared the entire campaign, uh, including the Heroics. Uh, I've beaten Onyxia, and my PvP rank is pretty high up there. So... I have played the game for a while, uh, played during soft launch, played during beta, been following the game since um, since they announced it, so I'm pretty knowledgeable about it. So let me help you make the correct decision when it comes to talents. What we're going to do is we're just going to start at the top here with Alliance, and we're going to go all the way down the list, and once we're done, we'll scroll back up, hit the minions, or minis rather, that are in the build, and then we'll hit all the leaders at the end. Okay? Let's get started. First we have Arcane Blast. Its talents are Amplification, where its radius increases by 1 when you play it in sequence. Arcane Power, spells, sequences start at 3 instead and end at 4. And then Torrent, gain a level after casting rank 4. I don't think anyone plays Torrent. It's not very good, in my opinion. Um, amplification is good in Jaina and Thalnos, and Arcane Power is probably best everywhere else. So, if you're playing Thalnos or Jaina, maybe Amplification. If not, go Arcane Power. Next we have Defias Bandits. They have three talents. Deadly Poison, Gain Poison, Pick Lock, two extra gold when opening chests. Last Resort, Stun on Death for three seconds. I don't like Last Resort. I'm sure it has some niche uses, but we're only picking one talent here, remember? So, Pick Lock or Deadly Poison. Um, I'm leaning more towards Pick Lock just because it's useful in both P uh, PvE and PvP. Uh, however, Deadly Poison is really good too. If I had to choose one... Man, it's it's a tough choice. I really think Pick Lock is probably your strongest, especially if you plan on PvPing. Um, poison is decent, but we're going Pick Lock here. Worgen! This guy is awesome. Uh, Lone Wolf on deploy. Grant plus one gold if no allies are nearby. Premeditation, increase ambush damage by 50%. And Frenzy on kill, gain bloodlust for 10 seconds. Um, Lone Wolf is good, but the radius is huge that it checks. Um, so, take that with a grain of salt. It's pretty situational. Premeditation um, increases ambush damage by 50%. Love it. It's the talent we're picking here by far. Uh, you can use Worgen to snipe different things with it. Uh, I believe at a high enough level it kills Ogre Mage. Uh, maybe not on the first hit out of stealth, but the next hit kills it. Same with Huntress. Uh, Bloodlust is bad. So yeah, premeditation all the way. Uh, Huntress. We have... Darnassian Steel, Blades Bounce three times, or three additional times. Elven Might is 50% additional damage to the initial target. And Shadow Meld is gain Stealth and Ambush. We're going Shadow Meld here, if we have to pick one. Stealth and Ambush is solid. Elven Might's decent, but I think Shadow Meld you get more value out of, especially in PvP. And Darnassian Steel is good in specific situations, but those uh, specific situations normally happen in PvE, and they're very few and far between. So, Shadow Meld for sure. Then we have Blizzard. Um, we have Brutal Ice, enemies within take 30% physical damage, uh, Ice Crown, summon an additional Blizzard at your base, and Cold Snap, freeze enemy troops in place. Cold Snap is the pick. It's so solid. It's so good. Um, people play it all the time in PvP. It's really good in PvE. Ice Crown's okay. Brutal Ice is great, um, but Cold Snap takes the cake. Harvest Golem. He has Trojan Chickens on death, spawn four angry chickens, unstable core, on death, stun nearby enemies for three seconds, bountiful harvest, on death, apply a heal over time effect to nearby allies. Um, if I were picking this unit, I would pick unstable core. I think that on death, stunning nearby enemies for three seconds is great because he is a tank that revives. So by stunning everything around him when he dies, it gives him time to revive and keep tanking again rather than them moving past him and onto the push of minis that you have behind him. Then we have, oh goodness, Mountaineer. We have Frenzied Spirit. Uh, when the bearer Mountaineer dies, other gains Bloodlust. Bleh. No thank you. Intimidation, bear gains Taunt, and Min Pets. Heal up to three additional nearby beasts when healing the bear. Um, intimidation is probably your best one, but this unit is terrible, and his talents aren't great. So if I had to pick something, Intimidation, but if I also had my choice in picking them, 
I wouldn't pick them at all. Uh, Harpies, super solid unit. We've got Infectious Swipes, gain poison. Trinket Collector, they gain minor, but cost one more. Talon Dive, deal double, double damage on the first attack. Um, Trinket Collector is good. Infectious Swipe is better. They do so much damage. They stack up poison so fast. These guys will shred anything that they touch. It's fantastic. Infectious Swipe all the way. Then we have Quillbore. Um, Quillbore has Tunnel Vision, where he deploys quickly. Uh, Bristleback deals a small amount of damage to melee attackers. Bramble Burst inflict poison on anybody enemies when emerging. All of these talents are solid. Um, I don't think there's really one that shines above the other, but for the sake of the video, we have to pick something. I think Bristleback is probably the best. Um, he, it lets him kill things quicker that normally he would take a long time killing, or maybe even die to. Um, it's, it's pretty solid, Bristleback all the way. Let's go with Raptors. These guys have strength in numbers, 10% more damage for each nearby Raptor, fast food on kill, heal a small amount of damage, and the motivation gain bloodlust while a chest or gold vein is nearby. Um, I think strength in numbers is probably the best. Maybe motivation, um, but it just kind of depends on what you're using for. If you're just going to cycle them, motivation might be good, but strength in numbers always works. Um, there doesn't have to be a gold vein or a chest around, and it really ramps up their damage, especially if you stack it with, like, a Prowler passive. So I would go with Strength in Numbers. Next we have... Murlocs. So, Safety Bubble, deploy with a bubble that blocks the first attack. Careful Aim, gain plus two range, or more locks, deploy with an additional Murloc. If I had to pick one, I would say Careful Aim. Um, I think it lets them trade a little better with certain things. Safety Bubble is also fantastic. Um, really weak against Drake, or things that do constant AoE. Um, however, both of these are probably solid. Man, it's such a toss-up, actually, between Safety Bubble and Careful Aim. Actually, I, I would go with Safety Bubble. I think it might be better than Careful Aim in PvE, and probably about the same in PvP. Drakes are kind of popular in PvP, but not too much right now. So I think Safety Bubble is probably the pick. Let's go with Prowler. We just talked about him. So, he's got three talents. One, gain stealth and stun when attacking from stealth. Pack leader, nearby beast allies deal 30% additional damage. And predatory instincts deal double damage to enemies who are at more than 75% health. Um, if you are playing a Murkai build, pack leader is so good. Um, boosting the damage of your Murlocs uh, and everything else you're playing is fantastic. If you're not playing, pick on the Prowl. This talent is fantastic. And it might even be better than pack leader. But specifically for playing Murkai, pick pack leader. If not, play on the Prowl. After that, we have Spiderlings. Man, I wish these guys were better. So, we have Bloated Carapace, Explode on Death, Poison nearby enemies. That does not affect uh, flying units. Frostbite, Gain Frost, and then Envenom, deal twice as much poison damage. So, no one really knows how Envenom works. Um, I don't know if it just applies two stacks of poison, or if it applies a stack and then doubles the amount of poison damage the thing is taking. I don't know. Um, if that's the case, maybe Envenom is good, but they're so squishy, it's hard for them to get the, uh, hit anything anyway. So I'm going Bloated Carapace. It's decently solid. It doesn't hit air units, but then again, I don't really think these guys are great anyway. So Bloated Carapace. Then we have Sheep. We have Golden Fleece, uh, killing the Golden Sheep in the pack. Gilded one Gold. Exploding Sheep, killing a Sheep. Damages nearby enemies. Unstable Transfiguration lasts twice as long. The Sheep regenerate health very quickly. I'm going with Golden Fleece. I think anything in this game that allows you to generate gold uh, becomes more valuable. And when you polymorph something, it takes away their armor and their resistance. And it also makes them vulnerable, where they take two times elemental damage. So it's pretty easy to kill them once they're Sheeps. So you're almost always going to get the gold if you play it well. Definitely Golden Fleece. Next, we have the Knoll. So, we have Rabid, reduces cost by one, and he gains cycle. Pillage, he deals C damage, and the Kide gain armor. Um, I think, man, he is just not amazing to begin with. Um, I think probably the best talent is the one that makes him cycle, Rabid. Um, just one less gold cost is nice, and it helps you get back to what you actually want to play. Maybe there's a case for Armored, but I really think Rapid is probably the best. Next is Vultures. Uh, he has Tendon Rip, attack to daze enemies for 3 seconds. Feeding Frenzy, the flock gains bloodless for 5 seconds from spawning a new Vulture. Migration, all additional Vultures spawn at the base. Absolutely. So Migration is the pick here. The problem with these guys uh, normally is that they all group up, so they're really easy to deal with. Safe Pilot, Chain Lightning, 
any AoE, a Stiff Breeze will knock them out of the air and kill them. Uh, however, Migration allows them to spawn at your base, which is fantastic because then they're spread out and it's harder for the enemy to deal with them. Then we have Chickens. Um, they have Sacrifice. Nearby beast allies can consume a chicken to heal themselves. Walking Crate. Deploy a Protective Crate when destroyed chickens emerge. And Furious Fowl. They gain Fury. I would probably venture to say Furious Fowl is the best talent here. I only picked Sacrifice because I thought it sounded fun and I wanted to try it out. But definitely Fury. Let's go. Drake is next. We have Mother Drake, where she periodically summons whelp eggs. Roost, where you perch on top of a nearby tower, staying there to defend it. And then engulfing flames, it gives her burn. Um, Mother Drake is by far the best talent here. It lets her spawn whelp eggs while she flies around periodically. Um, it's just awesome for clogging up lanes. And it just adds so much to the map. Definitely Mother Drake. Next is Whelp Eggs. This is one of those units that is kind of okay, and then once you get their talent, is fantastic. Rookery is that when one egg hatches, others hatch immediately. Flame Burst is you damage nearby enemies when hatching, and Granite Plating, Eggs Again Taunt. So the one you want here, and we're going to stress this, is Flame Burst. Don't pick any other talent. Flame Burst is fantastic. It's used in PvP to uh, kill groups of things. Anything that AoEs will just, like, hit them and then explode when they hatch because this will kill them. Um, it's just so good. You can use it to cheese so many PvE maps. It's just the best talent, hands down. Pyromancer. Um, Pyroblast, deal triple damage on the first attack. Conflagrate, splash area is doubled. And then Blaze of Glory, damage and burn nearby enemies on death. We're going to go with Pyroblast here. Dealing triple damage on the first attack is a very good. I've used uh, Conflagrate in some maps, but I i mean, every time I've used it, it felt like it wasn't really what I was looking for. So Pyroblast for sure. Triple damage on the first attack is very nice, especially when you're using it to defend your base or something like that. So you know he's going to get a good first hit off. Then we have Earth Elemental. Ready to rumble is taunt on deploy, shrap a blast, destroying a tower, deals damage to nearby enemies, and then obsidian shard on death, split into two smaller earth elementals. Uh, obsidian shard is probably the best here. It just makes the health pool that much bigger, um, and they tank a little longer. Ready to rumble is good, but I think if you play well, you won't need taunt. So obsidian shard for sure. Next we have fire elemental. This guy has three different talents. He has a talent called Immolation Aura that periodically deals damage around him. Molten Core, which on death summons a pool of lava. Uh, and then Fan the Flames, taking elemental damage increases damage dealt by 10%, stacking to 30%. Um, this guy actually does some decent damage, uh, however, for a tank. Um, so Fan the Flames is okay, but not fantastic. Molten Core is also just fine, but Immolation Aura is really solid. Um, it really helps him... Um, melt through things that are armored, even though he already does elemental damage. It's just a little extra damage on top of what he does. Uh, it's more than Fan the Flames, and it's more than Molten Core, because Molten Core doesn't do anything until he dies, which is good, but you don't really want him to die. <laughs> um, so Immolation Aura, for sure. After that, we have Smoke Bomb. Has three talents, Stranger in the Night. Effects apply to enemies as well. Band of Thieves, grant plus one level to cycle minis within, and through the shadows, effective minis move 50% faster until unstealthed. Um, Strangers in the Night is very difficult to use. There are some weird things you can do with it, like give your enemies well egg smoke bombs, so you never have to, or give them stealth, not smoke bombs, um, so you never have to deal with them. It's kind of cool, but it's it's really difficult to find uses for it. Uh, Band of Thieves grants one level to cycle minis within. Uh, this used to be in two in beta. It was really good. Now it feels okay. Um... It would be much better if Thalnos were back in the meta, um, or good, but I just think it's okay at the moment. And then Through the Shadows, effective minis gain 50% movement speed um, until on stealth. Uh, I really like this talent. It makes things like Sappers a little, uh, a little bit better, um, or like you could Smoke Bomb a Gargoyle so he can fly past a threat. Um, lots of uses for Through the Shadows. I would take Through the Shadows, personally. Next we have Firehammer. Her talents are Molten Metal, deal 50% more damage to flying enemies, Blazing Speed, Fury builds up to 40% higher, and Heightened Rage, level up upon reaching full Fury. I really like Blazing Speed here. I think it's probably the best bang for your buck. Heightened Rage might be good on um, 
bigger maps like Onyxia or where you can send her down a lane and she'll take a little while to get to where she's going, um, but also constantly fighting things along the way. So you can gain a couple levels before you get to the boss of the map. So in that case, Heightened Rage would be good, but I think for people just starting out, picking their first talent, I think Blazing Speed is very good. Molten Metal is good, but it's very niche in its use, so I think Blazing Speed is probably the best. After that, we have Living Bomb. Burden of Fate, Affected Enemies are Dazed. This one just seems bad. Chain Reaction, Splash Damage, Inflicts Living Bomb. It's okay. And then Blast Radius, also burn enemies within 10 yards. Um... I don't know which talent is best here. They're all not very good. It's definitely not the dazed. Um, the burning one is okay. Um, it just helps get their health pool down before the link bomb actually goes off. Um, but it's not amazing. Chain reaction is probably what I would pick here. Um, splash damage inflicting living bomb can just cause a bigger chain reaction. Um, but generally when you play living bomb, you don't really need a bigger chain reaction. But it could be solid, especially on maps where the boss summons a uh, a lot of different mobs around it. And the splash damage might also put Living Bomb on things. So, might have some good uses. Like I said, none of the talents are great. Go with Chain Reaction. We have Core Hounds. Fiery Rebirth on Resurrection. Damage near my enemies. Guard Dog. Deal 50% damage. Uh near friendly towers and meeting stones and then eternal bond resurrection range is unlimited this eternal bond is okay you can split them uh, down lanes and then uh when they deal with one it can get uh, resurrected but it's been bugged lately i know they said they fixed it um it hasn't been working on different like heights so if you have like a core hound up on a bridge and one below uh i guess they don't see each other for whatever reason it's certainly still a bug um, Fiery Rebirth is fine. It kind of just depends on what's going on on the map. But generally, like six, they cost 6 gold and they do decent damage. So when one dies, it's generally at range and the Fiery Rebirth doesn't do anything anyway. Um, Guard Dog is solid. They, you can deploy them to defend the base and they'll do 50% additional damage. I would probably pick Guard Dog if I had to pick one. Molten Giant. Three talents, Threatening Presence, Gain Taunt, Mountain of the Blood, On Death, Explode, Damaging Your Enemies, and Bolster, Heal when Destroying a Tower. Um, Bolster's okay, um, just kind of depends on what map you're playing. It gets better when there's more towers, obviously. Threatening Presence, Gain Taunt. If you play well, you probably don't need Taunt, and he's so slow, and you, he, I mean, he's not unbound, so you can't just, like, have an on-demand tank if you want him. He has to slowly lumber up to what he's fighting, and then taunt them. Uh, I would probably pick Blood of the Mountain, On Death, Explode, Damage from Nearby Enemies. Um, it's probably just the better talent here. Then we have Flame Waker. Heat Stroke, Damaging Enemies dazes them, it's okay. Engulf, Damaging Enemies burns them, a little bit of extra damage on top of what he's already doing, never hurt. And then Backdraft, Successive Attacks Increase, Flame Distance Wave, Resets on Movement. I really like Backdraft. Especially when you're fighting things that have large HP pools, um, just because you can sit there and have him turret, and he may end up killing some things that he really had no business killing to begin with. Um, it goes pretty far, and that's probably the one I would pick if I had to pick one. Warsong Raider. She has Saboteur. Damaging a tower reduces its damage dealt by 50% for 3 seconds. Raising focus, become a siege unit, ignoring enemy minis, and sunder armor, damaging an armed enemy removes their armor. Um, I really like Saboteur here. Um, being able to reduce the damage of different towers is very good, uh, especially in like PvP where there are dragon towers and rocket towers. Um, normal towers, it's also pretty good against. Um, super solid on PV, uh, PvE maps where maybe you're a few levels under the map, being able to reduce the damage the tower deals is actually pretty huge, especially when she's tanking it. Sunder Armor is pretty good too, um, but if I had to pick one, it would just be Saboteur. Raising Focus, uh, becoming a siege unit, ignoring enemy minis is okay. I've played a little bit in PvP, but it's not my favorite thing, so Saboteur for sure. We have Chain Lightning. Brilliant Flash on deploy, stun enemies for one second. 
Storm's Reach, dramatically increased jump distance between targets, and the Reverberation can be cast a second time. Uh, Brilliant Flash is my pick here. Being able to stun things and reset their aggro table, or um, just stun them from attacking. Like, it's really good to hit a Drake or a Rind with Chain Lightning, because they have that wind-up time in their attack, and then they do the AoE damage. So if you can get them right as they're starting their attack, and knock them out of their cast, but their cast, basically... Um, it's really good for you. Reverberation would be my pick only if I'm playing Thalnos. Uh, being able to cast a second Chain Lightning for two gold is pretty solid, but Thalnos isn't really good, so Brilliant Flash for sure. Execute. Bloodthirsty. Bloodlust allies within spell area within seconds. Killing spree. If an enemy is killed, the next horde mini costs one less. Overpower. Knock enemies away from the cast location. My pick here, hands down, is Bloodthirsty. Giving uh, allies within the spell radius Bloodlust is fantastic. Um, this combined with, like, Harpies will absolutely destroy a boss if you get to it. Um, it's just amazing. Uh, knocking things away from the cast location is okay. It kind of just depends on what you're doing, but not my favorite spell. Killing Spree is decent. Anything that reduces gold cost can be good. Um, but you really need to have more Horde Minis in order to play it, and Horde Minis aren't just super great right now. I believe it reduces its own cost too, um, but trust me, Bloodthirsty is fantastic. Next we have Frostwolf Shaman. Earthwall Totem. Once per deploy, place a totem that partially heals a nearby tower or base. Lightning Mastery. Range attacks chained to three nearby targets. Or Earth Shield. Grant armor to a nearby ally. Ability has one charge. I really like this unit in combinations with units that already have uh, resist, like Fire Elemental and Dracosath. Um, and if I'm playing it in that build, uh, I'm picking Earth Shield. Giving them armored on top of resist is fantastic. Lightning Mastery is good if you're using it to just kind of support something and not give them armored, but it, she doesn't do a ton of damage. Um, so it's it's fine, but I think Earth Shield is where you'll want to be at most of the time. Uh, Earth Wall Totem, once per deploy. Uh, we already read it, but it's okay. It doesn't heal that much. I thought it would heal more, which is why I picked it up earlier. Um, but it's not terribly great. I definitely would go with Earth Shield here and try and play her with something that has elemental or resist, rather. Um, Dark Spirit Troll, Big Bad Voodoo, regenerates health. Uh, by 20% every second. Headhunting on kill increased attack and movement speed by 10%. Stacks up to 50%. And Serpent Sting gain poison. Um, Headhunting is either bugged or tooltip is wrong. So he definitely gains the stacks and he does increase his movement and attack speed. But it feels like at max stacks he's at 10%. Uh, attack speed and movement speed instead of his 50%. It's so like he's gaining 2% per stack. Um, I tried using him in the Onexia fight. He worked well because he kills whelps at 23 when they're level 30, which is pretty solid. Um, but the headhunting talent didn't really work. Big Bad Voodoo regenerating health um, is good, just not when you're that under leveled. And then Serpent Sting is gaining poison. Um, that's probably what I would pick unless. You're playing this unit in a Cairn list. Um, Big Bad Voodoo coupled with Cairn's uh, health buff is pretty solid. Um, being able to regenerate even more health is fantastic. So Big Bad Voodoo if you're playing Cairn. Servant Sting if you're playing anything else. Then we have Goblin Sappers. Extra Boom. Deploy an additional Goblin Sapper. Rocket Powered Turbo Boots. Move twice as fast and gain the fast trace. And then Crude Gunpowder on death, burn nearby enemies. Um, definitely rocket-powered turbo boots here. Moving twice as fast and getting the fast rate is fantastic. You don't need to deploy an extra Goblin Sapper with extra boom. Uh, because two sappers will kill a tower by themselves. So you don't need to worry about the third one. Crude Gunpowder on death, burn nearby enemies could be okay. But burn's not super fantastic. So definitely rocket-powered turbo boots here. Stonehoof Torin. Pummel. After connecting a charge, stun the target for three seconds. Momentum. After connecting a charge, immediately charge a second time if possible. Or provoke. After connecting a charge, taunt nearby enemies. Um, 
Provoke is kind of weird. Uh, the Taunt is nice, obviously, but it's after connecting a charge. So generally, if she's charging something, she's going to be what they're hitting anyway. Um, and if she is not charging something, that means you played her behind your push. Um, and I don't know why you would do that. She's a tank, put her in front. Um, momentum, after connecting a charge, immediately charge a second time if possible. That, this one's okay, but sometimes it just, like, puts her so far away from your push that your push can't really support her. Uh, pummel, after connecting a charge, stun the target for three seconds. I think it's probably your best one. Um, just a three-second stun on charge is pretty solid, and it gets, like, it keeps her healthy longer, uh, which is always good for your tanks. Next we've got Ogre Mage. Frost Firebolt, gain Frost, Ignite, burn enemy targets, and Avarice, gain Bloodlust when blood, uh, Bloodlusting an ally. Ogre Mage's stats are not great. Uh, I got the Bloodlust talent thinking that Bloodlusting himself would be fantastic. It is not. Um, Frost Firebolt is probably your best bet here. Giving things a, an attack speed slow and a movement speed slow. Uh, with Frost Firebolt is just fantastic. I've seen some guildies use it in some heroic maps, and it seems great. So, definitely pick up Frost Firebolt. Avarice is not where it's at. Next, we have Bat Rider. We got Flaming Pitch. Flaming Pool uh, reduces enemies movement speed by 30%. And Chains of Vials increase the size of the Flaming Pool by 30%. And Fire Release Surplus accidentally leave vials on the ground, burning nearby enemies that touch them. Um, I really like Flaming Pitch here, I think. Uh, reducing enemies' movement speed is pretty solid. It just keeps them in the fire longer. It also uh, means that the next time she targets to throw one, that um, it'll be closer to the original pool, so maybe they'll be in two pools at once. Um, I think it's solid. Enchanted Vials increases Flaming Pool size by 30%. Could also be good. Uh, fire Release Surplus is also decent, but Flaming Pitch is probably your best talent if you had to pick one. Then we have Warsong Grunts. Oh boy. Blood Pact. When a grunt dies, the other gains bloodlust. That's so terrible. Guard duty. Remain at deploy location until entering combat. Also pretty terrible. Command. Nearby beast allies deal 30% additional damage. Also pretty terrible because the unit is bad. <laughs> um, maybe... I don't know. Guard duty is maybe the best. Blood Pact maybe the best. Command if you're doing beasts, and they're honestly, they're all just really bad. Um, if I had to pick one, I would probably pick Blood Pack. It probably makes them the best by themselves. You don't have to play beasts with them, and guard duty is just not great. Next, we have Abomination. He has Noxious Presence, poison nearby enemies every three seconds, Cannonball on deploy and at 50% health, stun nearby enemies for five seconds. And Fresh Meat, after hooking a target, deal double damage on the next attack. Um, I would probably pick Fresh Meat here. The double damage is solid, and being able to hook something into range is fantastic. Cannonball is okay, but if you're deploying him at your base for 6 gold to stun things, um, you're probably already losing. And the Noxus Presence, uh, poison damage every 3 seconds. It's actually really good, but for whatever reason, um, it doesn't poison uh, towers. Or bosses, I believe. For whatever reason, I'm not sure why. But it's not as good as you'd want it to be. So, fresh meat, for sure. Then we have Gargoyle. Uh, wing Buffet increases movement speed by 30%. Uh, 33%, rather. Obsidian Statue. On death, summon the statue with taunt. Lasts until destroyed. Aerial Superiority. Incoming damage from flying minis is reduced by 50%. I like Wing Buffet here. He's already pretty slow, so increasing his movement speed really helps. It puts added pressure onto uh, the enemy base, especially in PvP. Um, aerial superiority is also good in certain maps. 50% uh, damage reduction is nothing to, to cough at. It's, it's so good. Um, but being able to go quickly um, is probably a little better. It gives your opponent less time to generate gold to deal with your Gargoyle. So, Wing Buffet here for me. Aerial Superiority, if you think Rind is going to be very popular. Skeletons! Questing Buddies. One Skeleton gains Armor, one Resist, and one Stealth. Cackle gain Taunt. Exhume, if deployed near a tower or a meeting stone, deploy plus two additional Skeletons. Exhume is probably the best one here. Um, being able to summon five Skeletons instead of three is fantastic. Um... 
there's something you can do in PvP where uh, you can... I played, So I played these guys in my Baron build, and you can put a bunch of stuff on the map and save a little gold and let your opponent respond with their safe pile and their unbound stuff and, you know, spend their gold. And then if you have four gold with these guys and a quill board, you can take the base pretty quickly. Or not, not the base, but a tower pretty quickly and still have all your skeletons left over. Um, it's super solid. It just increases the rate at which they destroy things. Um, great talent. I love Exhum. Banshee. Solar Eruption. Possessed targets detonate on death. Unholy Frenzy. Possessed targets gain bloodlust for 10 seconds. Will of the Necropolis. Fully heal the possessed target. Will of the uh, Necropolis is hands down the best talent here. Fully healing something that you take is fantastic. Um, it doesn't seem like it would be because you're like, oh, we'll just play better and don't damage whatever you're hitting. But a lot of the times, things will take damage on accident. Um, or like, the big things you're trying to take uh, take over will start at the enemy base and walk slowly towards you and they'll probably pick up some damage on the way. So we'll the crop list for sure. Meat Wagon. We have Meat and Bones. Every other attack summons a skeleton instead of dealing damage. Filet Trebuchet increases bombard range by plus two. Increased gears gain fury. Filet Trebuchet is hands down the best target here. It makes its range longer than anything in the game, including bosses, so it can hit bosses and towers and bases uh, from outside of their range, and then your opponent has to deal with them with units or spells or whatever, but yeah, great talent. Filet Trebuchet all the way. It's one of the main uh, main things you do for beating Onyxia at a low level is playing Meat Wagon because it can sit outside of Onyxia's range and damage her. Then we have Necromancer. Pulls of the Damned. On kill, summon a skeleton. Jeweled Skulls. Summon skeletal mages instead of skeletons. And Breath of the Dying. On death, summon five skeletons. Uh, I think Jeweled Skulls here is hands down the best talent. Skeletal mages are way better than regular skeletons. Uh, they frost things. Their range. Just fantastic. Um, I would pick them over either of these two other talents. Then we have Cheat Death. Um, Seal Fate, affected minis gain bloodlust, but die when the effect ends. Vampirism, affected minis are healed when dealing damage. Apocalypse, affected skeletons resurrect at your base when they die. All of these talents are actually pretty solid. The only issue I have here is with vampirism, and it's that it's bugged. For whatever reason, um, units, or it used to be bugged, I haven't tested it in a little bit, but, uh, units affected by this cheat death talent don't actually heal from dealing damage to the enemy base or the end boss of a map, um, which makes it kind of silly, honestly. Uh, Apocalypse is really good if you're playing Skeletons and that's something you're doing. Um, Seal Fate is also really good depending on what you're doing. So a lot of people don't like this talent because the enemy or the minis die after the cheat death ends. Uh, however, if you're fighting something, that is going to one-shot your minis anyway, like uh, Nixia. Uh, cheat deathing a big group of minis to survive a couple hits from Onyxia while getting Bloodlust, and then having them die isn't really a big deal. It's pretty great. Um, so I think all three of these are solid. Uh, like I said, Vampirism is a little bug, but you still get health from, uh, I believe, normal towers and just fighting other minis. So... It's still solid. If I had to pick one here, it would actually still be Vampirism. I don't really like playing Apocalypse with uh, Skeletons. I don't think Skeletons are super good uh, or warrant having them respond back at the base. But I do recognize that it is good in some scenarios. And then Seal Fate if I'm specifically going for Onyxia and I don't have a talent yet for whatever reason. Uh, so I would pick Vampirism. Plague Farmer. Parting Gift. On death, summon a pumpkin. When touched, poisons nearby enemies. Virulence. On kill, poison enemies near the target. And then Splashing Pumpkins. Increase range by one and double the splash area. Definitely Splashing Pumpkins here. Parting Gift is such a weird talent. Um, it's not very good. Um, it's on death. You get to poison something when they touch it. Poison is like, like 40 damage over 8 seconds, I believe. And it's just one stack. So this does almost nothing. Uh, if this were like Batrider, where she dropped it as she flew, or like Mother Drake on the the Drake that summons well pegs, this might be a little better, but it's pretty bad right now. Virulence, uh, on kill, poison enemies near the target. 
could be good depending on the scenario. Like if there's a molten giant with a bunch of chickens and you have this talent, you'll apply a ton of stacks of poison to the giant. But splashing pumpkins, for sure, is just the best talent. Then we have Ghoul. Uh, Bone Shield cannibalizing grants armor for 10 seconds. Uh, cannibalizing grants bloodlust for 10 seconds. And taste for blood. Deal 50% additional damage to enemies who are below 50% health. Uh, Bone Shield is your best talent here. So cannibalizing is when something dies that he has dealt damage to. Uh, there will be a corpse left on the ground. And then he will sit there and eat it and heal. So gaining armored and healing at the same time is very good. It makes this unit extremely tanky. Uh, he's definitely worth having um, if you're playing Undead or you just need a cheap gold tank. Giving him armored while healing, great. And then Skeletal Party. We have five man, summons a Skeletal Tank, Rogue, Priest, and two Mages. Corpse Run, gain plus one level for each deploy after the first. Maximum is plus three levels. And then Ritual of Rhyme, summon five Skeletons who guard the deploy location. Uh, these talents aren't crazy by any means. Um, I actually like Ritual of Rhyme. Skeletal Mages are really good, and you can use them in combination with like a Quill Bore or an Unbound Tank to take a tower, um, and then they'll just sit there and guard it afterwards. So, probably Ritual of Rhyme. And now let's scroll back up, and we'll get into talents of what I'm playing, and then talents of the leaders. So, here we have Griffin Rider. She has airdrop, periodically drop a potion, leveling up the first ally to touch it. Uh, Odin's Fury, gain Fury, Mighty Throw, gain plus three range. I think Mighty Throw is far and away the best talent here. Her plus three range lets her trade better with certain uh, minis, like Drake, uh, kill welds without getting touched. Um, just makes her overall a better air support. So, Mighty Throw for sure. Safe Pilot. Oh man, this one's going to be tricky. So, no much cloaking device, deploy with... Uh, from the explosion with stealth and ambush, come in hot, deploy twice as fast, and burn nearby enemies, and then Gnomish Muttonizer, apply more the first blaster target. So, Gnomish Muttonizer is good, but it's not going to be the one we pick. It's okay when you have to deal with something very tanky, uh, strip them of their armor or resist, and make them vulnerable, but not many uses for it currently. Uh, come in hot, deploy twice as fast, and burn nearby enemies is the one that I picked first. Um, and if you are planning on PvPing a lot, I would probably pick coming in hot. Having the pilot be on-demand damage, um, kind of like a spell where there's not as much of a delay is good. Um, the burn is fantastic. Deploying quicker means you can use her to uh, control chests of gold around the map. Um, it's very solid. And the Gnomish Cloaking Device, if you are strictly going to be playing PvE, um, is probably your best bet. Being able to deploy from the crash in stealth and have ambush damage is super solid. Generally, you can line it up better in PvE than you can PvP, uh, just because the map is predictable and, I mean, you're not playing against another person doing different things. It's just the map throwing units at you. Um, so, this is overall more damage. This is just quicker and more goal control. So, PvE if you're playing, or no much cloaking device if you're playing strictly PvE. Coming in hot if you're playing PvP as well. Uh, deep breath. <laughs> so, allies caught in the effect gain resist. Melting point damaging armor and enemies removes their armor. And double dragon casts a second wave in the opposite direction. Um, if you don't know what deep breath is, this is what it looks like. It's a beam of fire from the sky. It's pretty long already. Um, I don't know if I like double dragon that much. It puts, like, it doubles the, the range it hits, but I don't know that you need it to be that long. I personally like the resist talent. There are a lot of cool armored minis in this game that don't really have a way to get resist at the moment. Um, this does that. I use it with footmen to create a giant death ball of really tanky units. Um, so I would probably pick that, but it's such a far off spell for people that look at it and figure it out and decide what you want to do with it. But I really think attunement's probably the best. Um, Footman, Shield Bash, periodically stun the target for one second. Fortification, gain 30% extra empty health. And then last stand, armor increases to 75% damage reduction when no other footmen are nearby. I really like Fortification here. Shield Bash is good, don't get me wrong, but I always play Footman in a Death Ball build with healing. I don't play them anywhere else. So 
giving them 30% extra health that is empty is really solid because then you can play them and then use things like Holy Nova to support them and you don't have to worry about wasting the heal when you use it the first time. Um, it also gives Tyrion something to start healing as soon as you play him. Um, and just having 30% extra health, especially if that 30% extra health gets full ever, because it does, um, especially when you play them in tandem with each other, um, just fantastic. Holy Nova. Inner Fire. Affected allies gain armored and resist for 5 seconds. Renew also adds a heal over time to allies, and then Amplify Magic affects are doubled on all elemental minis. If you are playing Dracosath, play Amplify Magic. Um, Renew heals and then does the same healing amount over time afterwards. Um, so that one's really solid, but if you're playing Dracosath, you're playing elemental minis anyway, Amplify Magic will do the same thing as Renew, um, but it will also... Um, deal extra damage to the elemental minis you're playing it against. So, amp magic if you're playing Draxath, renew if you're playing anything else. Then Dark Iron Miner. Um, after mining, gain armored. After mining, drop a proximity mine, damaging nearby enemies when touched. And then Dwarven Ambition, gain fury. I really like fury here. Um, it actually makes him mine gold quicker. Uh, it makes him do a lot of damage to different things. Um, if there is a tank supporting him, his fury is actually kind of crazy. Armored is fine. It makes him a tank, but if you're using him to mine gold, you're not deploying him in a spot where he can tank generally. And then the the mine is okay. It doesn't do that much damage. They even recently buffed it, and it still doesn't do a ton uh, I think now it finally kills a cult wall that walks over it before it didn't, but it's still just a tiny amount of damage. So, I like Fury here. Okay, let's get into leaders. Blink, periodically teleport away from attackers. Clear casting, spells cost one less, but no less than one if played immediately after Jaina. And Flurry, frost bolts burst on impact, frosting enemies near the target. This is one I might get crucified for, because I think that Blink, the one that a lot of people like, is not super great. Um, there are a lot of things that one-shot her in this game. Blink won't help you from that, because she doesn't blink away from things um, until she has been hit the first time. So I don't think it's fantastic. Um, clear casting is my favorite. Uh, a lot of people say it's bad, because you have to play the spell right after Jaina, but you should be able to line that up in your deck. Um, there's no reason that you can't. Um, it's, it is definitely harder to play with than something like Blink or Flurry, because you have to actually think about what you're doing, but it's not that bad. Um, anything that saves you gold in the long run will uh, will definitely be better than any of the other things. Uh, Flurry is really good, actually. Being able to frost in an AoE is super solid. Um, so pick Flurry if you want an easy time. I think Clear casting is still the better one. Uh, pick that one if you actually want to think about your deck and what you're doing with it, and you plan on playing a couple spells. Um, get value out of your gold. Don't just don't just let the value go to waste. Then we have Tyrion. Uh, Divine Shield. Gain a magical shield at 30%. Absorbing all damage for 5 seconds. Consecrate. Regularly consecrate the ground. Damaging enemies within. And then by the light, heal the primary target for twice as much. Um, I really like Divine Shield here. It protects him from being one-shot, um, which is so fantastic. Um, he is actually... Like, he's a tank, but he is susceptible to, like, elemental damage, and this protects him um, from that while also keeping him alive to heal your push. Uh, By the Light is okay. Um, I used it for a little bit, but Divine Shield is just better. And Consecrate's fine. Divine Shield for sure. I have Shadow Song. Enveloping shadows cast smoke bomb on deploy, stealthing nearby allies. Shadow step periodically teleport to a ranged attacker when hit, and then remorseless deal double damage for two seconds after killing an enemy. I think all these talents are good. They all have their situations, but if I had to pick one, I would probably pick enveloping shadows. You're generally playing her with unbound units and stealth units already, so things like Thias Bandit and Worgen. Um, so something you can do is. Um, like, play your Defias Bandits, they hit something, they stun it, and then you deploy your Maev, and they go back stealth, and they restun things. Or, like, Worgen, he can come out with his Ambush Damage Talent, deal more damage, uh, and then 
you play Maev and Smoke Bomb, and he just does it again. It can be, in, you can do some insane combos with it. Um, definitely enveloping shadows. Hogger. He has Hamhawk. Also gains 10% max health each time he's played. Spruled Meat, Game Poison, or Fatal Frenzy, On Death, Bloodlust, Nearby Beasts. Hamhawk is far and away the best talent here. It makes him like his own wrecking machine, getting extra health each time he's played. Super solid. Murkai. Oh, let's get the Murkai. Okay. Tip of the Spear. Tide Hunter spawn at Old Murkai's location instead. Marathon of the Murlocs. Uh, March of the Murlocs lasts an additional 5 seconds longer after deploying. And Electric Eels. Attacks briefly stun enemies. I really like Marathon of the Murlocs here. Um, especially in PvP. Because... It sounds kind of counterintuitive to want to not spend all of your gold, but that's kind of what we're doing. So you spend enough to get a really good push going and then save your gold so you can respond to your opponent's response. So save things like Quill Bore or um, Safe Pilot or Chain Lightning or things of that nature so you can protect your push that you just created. Um, and by increasing the duration of his passive, or his ability rather, an additional five seconds you have the time to respond to what they're doing and also get murloc so i think that's a really good talent um it also just means you can spend more gold in the pve campaign because you have longer to generate it as well so definitely marathon of the murlocs here charlga oh boy so nature's grasp root two additional nearby targets but deal half damage Cavernous Mist, deploy gold, uh, costs reduced by one, and Spirit Passage minis played for five gold, gain a level, and deploy in stealth. Um, man, these talents are just rough. If I had to pick one, I would probably choose Nature's Grasp, especially if you're playing her in PvE. Um, it's probably just the better of the talents, especially on PvE maps where you can predict what's being played and you don't have to worry about them killing it with a flyer or something like that. Well, if you're playing PvP, do Spirit Passage and do the Gargoyle build where you play a 5 cost and a Gargoyle in the deck and then you just play the Gargoyle for 5 gold. Uh, give it stealth an extra level. It's kind of fun. It's definitely probably the best way to play her, um, in my opinion, but it's still not amazing. So, Spirit Passage PvP, Nature's Grasp PvE. Rind Blackhand. Flaming Soul. Cast Living Bomb upon dismounting. Damaging nearby enemies. Scale and Steel. Gain Resistant while flying and Armored while dismounted. And Legionnaire. Dismount when first taking damage. The Drake continues fighting. Legionnaire is horrible. Flaming Soul is... Uh, not great. Scale and Steel is definitely where it's at. It just makes him so tanky. Um, it's so fantastic. Pick Scale and Steel every time. Drexath. So, he has chromatic scales, grants nearby allies a resistant trait, piercing blows, attacks pierce through enemies in a line, and a lasting legacy. On death, drop a banner. Nearby enemies take 50% additional elemental damage, last 10 seconds. Uh, chromatic scales seems good, but you are already playing him with elemental minis, and the ones that you want to have resistant, like your tanks, generally already do. Also, it's bugged currently. We don't know if it's a visual bug or if it's actually happening, but when he has this talent and he gets near an enemy mini, they gain that little shield next to their name or their health bar um, that shows that they also have resistance. So it looks like it's affecting them as well. We don't know if that's the case yet or if it's just a visual bug, but it is what it is. It's an okay talent. Lasting Legacy. If you're playing Dracosath, I think you're trying to play Dracosath Death Ball with a Shaman supporting him and giving him armored. Um, you don't want him to die, um, so you don't really need Lasting Legacy. And then Piercing Blow is probably what I would pick. It's okay, but it's probably still his best talent. Next we have Sneed. Oh man, so many things to talk about with Sneed. So he has Mine as Money Friend, gain the Minor Trait, lead with Greed, gain an additional plus two gold when Sneed triggers Sneed before Greed, and then Land Grab, gain a level whenever Sneed before Greed triggers. Um, Land Grab got capped to ten levels, which is kind of a bummer but you know it is what it is it's still really good 10 levels on top of a pve map is fantastic uh, lead with greed gain an additional plus two gold once need triggers need before greed this one is fantastic it's what i use in pvp um it's so good it um i mean claiming a chest giving you six gold 
means you can swing the game in your favor really quickly. You can also do this on PvE maps if you set up properly, and gaining gold against a PvE map is still really good. Um, definitely lets you take advantage of just making giant death balls. And then gain the minor trait is okay. He mines all of the gold in like one swipe of his saw blade. So it's fine, but I would definitely pick lead with greed here. Um, being able to abuse it in PvP is awesome. Um, doing it in PvE is still good. Um, and then if you had to pick a second talent, I would pick land grab next. But definitely lead with greed. Let's look at Grom. Okay, he has Bladestorm, gain an AoE Blade Spin ability that damages all nearby enemies. Mirror Image, summon two fragile mirror images when entering combat. And Savage Strikes, deal double damage to enemies who are below 50% health. Um, I would pick Mirror Image here. It just does the most DPS out of all of these. It's kind of just what it is. Savage Strikes is good. Um, it helps him one-shot things that normally he would have had to two-shot. Um, and the Mirror Images are kind of squishy. Uh, and Bladestorm is really weak, and he doesn't trigger it unless there are a certain number of enemies around him. Um, Mirror Image, for sure, here. There's probably a case for Savage Strikes, but I think I would pick Mirror Images here. Karen Bloodhoof. Oh, boy. Okay. So, Reincarnation, After Death, Resurrect at 50% health once. Planes running, move 50% faster and gain the fast trait. Aftershock, when stun expires, affected enemies are dazed for 5 seconds. I really like planes running. A lot of people like reincarnation. Um, I think if you're PvPing, you probably want planes running. It helps him get to the treasure chest quicker. It helps him get to support a, a push if you have, like, if the first one you played happens to die. Um, reincarnation is good too, but I think it takes a couple seconds for him to resurrect. And so the push could have already moved on and onto your back line before he actually comes back up. So. Planes running if you're playing um, PvP. Reincarnation is probably better in PvE. I just really like planes running. So, either of those two, you'll probably be safe. Thalnos. Oh boy. So, Bane. Playing a spell increases attack speed by 30% for 5 seconds. Drain life. Uh, gain lifesteal. And dominance. Spells costing 4 or more grant an additional level. Dominance is horrible. Um... Drain life is really bad right now. Hopefully it gets buffed soon. We will see. Because um, right now it's just abysmal. Uh, Bane is also not great. But it's probably still the best one you can pick here. Um, unfortunately. If drain life gets buffed. It'll be drain life that you want to pick. But as it stands right now. Bane is probably your best bet. Then we have Baron Ribbondare, Death Pack. Periodically sacrifice a nearby skeleton to be healed. Uh, that heals him to full health, by the way. That is very good. Skeletal Frenzy. Nearby allied skeletons gain bloodlust. It's okay. And then Chill of the Grave. Summon skeletal mages instead of warriors. That talent is so good. So, there's a little bit to talk about here. Chill of the Grave is fantastic. It adds so much co uh, control to the map. Uh, especially in PvE. Especially if you can... Uh, claim all the towers and meeting stones around the map. Uh, it's amazing in PvP too. Don't get me wrong. It's so good. Um, they're, they're just great. Skeletal mages are just so much better than regular warriors. However, in PvP, there's also a uh, death pack build that abuses um, Baron healing to full health and unbound skeletons to keep him alive. And it's really hard to kill him. They're running things like Holy Nova um, and skeletons, so they have on-demand healing. Uh, and cheat death as well. So it's really obnoxious. It's really good. Um, but I would expect something to get nerfed with his kit. I'm not sure yet what it would be. But both of these talents are very strong. If you're a beginner just playing. I would probably pick Chill of the Grave. But your second talent is definitely Death Pact. Then last and certainly least unfortunately. We have Sylvanas. Um, Black Arrow. Pierce through enemies in a line. Dealing elemental damage. Banshee's Whale, Scream on Death, stunning nearby enemies for 3 seconds, and Forsaken Fury, nearby Horde and Undead Minis gain Fury. Um, Black Arrow is hands down the best talent here. Um, being able to turn her into kind of an AoE unit is way better than the other ones. Uh, Banshee's Whale is kind of weird, I don't know why. I know that she will die eventually, and that you get a Banshee from it, but the stun just is so weird to me, it's so bad. 
and then Forsaken Fury, nearby Horde, and Undead Minis gain Fury. Seems like it would be good, but because of her passive, they kind of outrun her, so they don't actually get that most of the time. Um, Black Arrow is just hands down the best talent here, but I believe that is the end. That's everything. We looked at all of the units and all of their talents, so let me know what you think in the comments. Uh, I appreciate you being here so much. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. If you have any comments, well, put them in the comments as well. Um, did I miss something? Are there talents that you think are way better than what I've described or what I picked? Uh, let me know. But once again, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.